Hey everyone, Sumo Spiffy here. It's time to get your boy into these breakdowns. Kirishima and Ura are the matchup today, and even though Kiri's got a 4-2 lead in the head-to-head, -head, you know I'm going to find whatever opportunity might exist for Pinky Boy to swing it back and take one from the Ozeki monster. Let's see what we got. Ura does what Ura does, hanging back and absorbing the initial contact. He tries to get a pinch on Kiri's arms, but Kiri snaps him down to throw Ura a little off balance. Ura works inside, pushing Kiri's left elbow up to make space, but Kiri uses his reach advantage well, jacking Ura in the face twice with the left palm and driving him back. Kiri charges, but this is also well within Ura's playbook, allowing him to slide into the Tawara and powering off to go back at Kiri. Then Ura brings shades of Midori Fuji's to come into the fight, committing his whole grip to a pull on Kiri's left arm and getting out of the way so Kiri can tumble into the space. Somehow, miraculously, Kiri plants his left foot and stays upright, getting spun around instead of falling, which gives him at least a puncher's chance by driving backwards and hoping for the best. But Pinky Boy is a strong boy, so he's able to bear hug Kiri from behind and escort him out. The ending looks like it's all another Ura special, but it's really Kiri's sensational save that turns it from merely a slick Katasukashi into a wild and unique finish. Ura comes forward a little more and gets his hands more out in front, absorbing the initial contact on his arms more than his body this time. Now watch how many times Kiri baps him in the head. One. Two. Yeah, that's a push rather than a strike, but roll with it. Three. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. And after all that, with Ura already wanting to get inside to keep from getting smacked, the last one pushes his head back to set up even more recoil and create a slapdown opportunity. The pinky fanboy in me likes Kiri a little less after this, but I can't deny it's effective. If Ura's gift is fancy techniques and coming out of nowhere with his Kimarite, beating him senseless if he can't prevent it, and baiting him into one of your well-practiced maneuvers is definitely a functional strategy. Kiri's opening here is pretty smart. He pushes Ura's head, then pulls it, then shoves it again. None of these are attempts at an immediate win. He's trying to disrupt Ura's balance by forcing him to shift that balance in opposite directions at Kiri's will. Once he has Ura on the rope, he goes in for the final push, because, obviously, but he doesn't overcommit and remains in a very good position when Ura recovers and pushes him back. Then he goes for the face again, hitting a left slap and a right face push. The push catches Ura overextended in his lunge and starts the fall that Kiri finishes. I'm pretty sure Kiri didn't expect that push to score the victory. Nevertheless, this was set up by getting Ura moving back and forth reflexively rather than under control. Imagine your Ura in this situation. Here's this guy, he's improving, he's a tough opponent, but he's not the second coming of Hakuho. You can beat him. You and your training partners and your coaches see from the tape that he's gotten you the last two times by using your face as batting practice and then treating your neck like a fat joystick. The main goal now is to defend against his hands. Sure, he can slip one through and touch you if he really tries, but as long as he's not given an opportunity to land big slaps or full-range choke pushes, things should go better for you. As soon as his hands land on your head, you jam your arms up to free yourself. Yeah, he still tries to pull, but you've nerfed the strength on it and you're able to bury your head in his chest. He pushes your left arm away, but your hand is on the biceps and your right arm is underneath his left forearm. He can't get to you from the right, and even though he can give you a quick swat on the left, he can't pull his arm back to wind up a strike. This is good. Now his left hand is under the elbow. You'd almost welcome a left hand strike at this point. You're way inside, and if he doesn't defend your push, you can eat a shot in exchange for force out. You tighten down a clamp on his right arm, getting ready for a grappling fight that should be much more in your favor than the last two fights. Then he gets out of the way and you're staring up at the lights. This is where guys start to get deflated. This one starts out much differently. Kiri goes over top of Ura like he's trying to land the unbreakable hold he managed on Tobizaro and Midori Fuji. Fortunately for Ura, his left arm blocks Kiri's right hand and he's able to pop his head up right away. He comes up in a very strong stance, driving up on his right side with both legs fully behind the effort, and he pops Kiri off balance. 
Kiri clutches at Ura's head and shoulder to hang on, but just as his feet land, and before he can catch his balance, Ura shoves down on his right arm and dips the other way. Kiri just manages a fingertip push on Ura's face, but it's enough to force Ura somewhat back rather than allowing him a mostly lateral move. Because Ura never gets all the way around Kiri's arm, he's unable to take advantage of Kiri's awkward lean, and when Kiri gets set, he's in the exact position he'd want to launch Ura out of the ring. Ura keeps hopping right away from Kiri's right hand and trying to parry the left arm as he threatens a pull down, but he can't get either hand completely off him and his balance gives out at the rope. This was actually quite a good effort from Ura, not just in a yay good try sense, but in that he had Kiri in some genuinely disadvantageous positions. But in the end, it still wasn't quite enough. So can Ura beat Kirishima? My heart says yes. My head says yes, but don't count on it. You know the phrase, you make your own luck? It looks like Ura needs to get lucky to beat Kiri. There's not a clear strategy he can adopt or counter to really ramp up his odds. But after getting compelled or baited into doing what Kiri wanted him to do, he found a way to turn that around and control the action. Kiri's general superiority as a wrestler won the day in the end, but Ura did the work, found a functional strategy, and almost got lucky. The question now is, can he look ahead to what Kiri may do in their next meeting and find a way to defeat that strategy? It's tough, because Kiri and his team have proven themselves very proficient at studying and adopting tactics suitable for the situation, and now they have tape of Ura really taking it to Kiri that they can dissect and plan around. Kiri's injury may even the odds somewhat, but unless he looks like an absolute physical disaster, this seems like a very bad matchup for Pinky Boy at the moment. Alright, that'll do it for this breakdown. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.